Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today, we're digging into the fun topic of VRAM capacity. That said, this video isn't going to be an in-depth look at a wide range of graphics cards with varying VRAM capacities. Instead, for this one, we're going to be looking at the 2GB and 4GB versions of the GeForce GTX 680. So, why am I doing a VRAM capacity comparison with a 6-year-old graphics card? Because I can. Recently, I got my hands on the 4GB GTX 680. I've had the 2GB model since it was released, and while I was able to borrow a 4GB model for testing six years ago, back then I didn't really learn much, other than the fact that at the time it was just a huge waste of money because games didn't require that much VRAM, even at 1600p. Today though, games can often and do consume more than 2GB of VRAM at 1080p, and we looked at this last year in our How Much RAM Do Gamers Need video. The question is though, how much, if any, impact does this have on frame rate performance, and are there any other drawbacks to having 2GB of VRAM opposed to 4GB or more? In our recent GTX 680 revisit using the more common 2GB version, I was often told the results were misleading, and if I had used a 4GB version of the GTX 680, it would have been much faster in today's games. Then shortly after that video, I revisited the R9 280X and I included just the 4GB version of the GTX 680 to see if anyone noticed. As it turns out, it seems only the AMD fans noticed and they screamed biased as I was misrepresenting the GTX 680 by using the 4GB version, which is naturally much faster. This isn't new either, the hottest talking point of my 2016 video, can the GTX 1050 Ti outperform 2012's $500 flagship GTX 680, was the fact that the GTX 680 was handicapped by the 2GB memory buffer, and it'd win for sure if it had 4GB like the GTX 1050 Ti. Anyway, let's not worry about that and move on to the results. I have some graphs for you guys, followed by some side-by-side -side gameplay footage, which reveals something very interesting, but we'll get to that in a moment. For now, let's check out the graphs. First up, we have the Dawn of War 3 results, and as you can see, the 4GB model is no faster than the 2GB version, delivering the exact same result. I should note, I did attempt to clock both models at the same frequency, but the 2GB model would often clock itself about 2% higher, so keep that in mind as we continue to go over the results. The Dirt 4 performance was also much the same, though the 2GB model did come out slightly ahead, but with less than a 2% difference. That's certainly within our margin of error, especially given the possible clock speed difference. Ghost Recon Wildlands still exceeds the 2GB usage, even with the low quality settings, but despite that, the 4GB model appeared no faster. Then we have Mass Effect Andromeda, and here we see performance again is much the same with either model. Battlefield 1 is one of the few games I've tested maxed out, and even here the 4GB model is only slightly faster. The average can certainly be chalked up to the margin of error, and that 5% increase for the 1% low is probably genuine, though the difference really could be as small as 2%. The 2GB version was consistently faster in Prey, and 2FPS might not be that much here, but there is a little more to this story, and I will look at that in a moment. Finally, rounding out the graphs is Resident Evil 7, and again, there's just nothing to see here, folks. Performance-wise, there's no difference between the 2GB and 4GB versions of the GTX 680, even in modern titles. Okay, so now it's time to check out some side-by-side -side gameplay footage, and we'll start with Battlefield 1. Here you can see, despite using the ultra-quality settings, we're only just exceeding 2GB of VRAM, and therefore the 2GB GTX 680 is able to hang in there, rendering the textures without an issue. Although the minimum frame rate did drop down more for the 2GB model in this pass, keep in mind this is just a single run, and over an average of three runs, they were much more similar. Moving on, we have Star Wars Battlefront 2. Oddly here, the 4GB model actually consumed more system memory than the 2GB version, so that was a little unexpected. That said, we have seen examples in the past where giving more memory just makes things a little more memory hungry. The game was tested at 1080p using the higher quality settings, and as you can see, the game does allocate more than 2GB of VRAM. Performance though was basically identical using either the 2GB or 4GB version of the GTX 680. Next up we have Project Cars 2, and this title was tested using the ultra quality settings, and this meant the game allocated up to 2.7GB of VRAM, and this time we do see the 2GB model consuming roughly 1GB more of system memory. Still, in our test system, performance was much the same using either model. 
Now we have some Rise of the Tomb Raider action, and for this one we were forced down to the medium quality settings for playable performance. However, I have jacked the textures up to the high quality setting to increase the VRAM usage. Under these conditions, up to 2.9GB of VRAM was allocated for the 4GB model, and this meant VRAM usage was considerably higher with the 2GB model. That said, overall performance was much the same with just two frames in it, and that's nowhere near enough to be noticeable. Assassin's Creed Origins was also tested using the medium quality preset with the textures manually set to high. This saw VRAM usage peak at 2.5GB, though like Star Wars Battlefront 2 we find that RAM usage was actually lower with the 2GB card, so again a very curious result. Last up we have Prey, and this is the most interesting title. This game was tested using the high quality preset, and VRAM usage did peak at 3.1GB, but if you recall, the 2GB model was faster than our previous Prey benchmark. If you haven't already noticed, the reason for this seems to be the fact that the 2GB model simply isn't even attempting to render most of the textures. Here's a better look at the issue. I noted this was happening in our GTX 680 revisit a few weeks ago. I said the game was very playable and quite smooth in fact, but it just looks horrible with most of the textures missing, and now you can see what I mean. So when it comes to benchmark numbers, for the most part the VRAM capacity has little impact on performance, and this is also true not just for benchmarks, but for when playing for hours upon hours. Unless you have a very limited amount of system memory, or the memory you're using is very slow, then chances are spotting the difference is going to be very unlikely. Now, as you've just seen, visual quality can be significantly impacted depending on the game. Prey is the only title I came across where the 2GB GTX 680 was noticeably worse, but there'll no doubt be other titles as well. Of course, it was still playable, it just looked pretty ordinary. Tweaking the quality settings to better balance the load might help, but really you will be more limited with what you can do with the 2GB model. Basically, what all this means is if you can get your hands on a 4GB version of the GTX 680 or any other graphics card for that matter, then it's worth doing if you're not paying an exuberant price premium over the 2GB model. Looking at budget graphics cards like the RX 550, you can at times get the 4GB version for just $10 more, and I would suggest you do so. Sometimes though, you will be faced with a $40 premium and that's where things get a bit iffy in my opinion. For the most part, you won't see a 40% return on investment, especially if you're playing less demanding titles, such as Overwatch and Fortnite, for example. So keep that in mind. Anyway, I hope this video helps clear up some misconceptions about VRAM capacity. Uh, more is certainly desirable, but it doesn't always mean better performance, so be careful how much you spend to nab that extra GDDR memory. If you did enjoy this video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe for more content, and if you appreciate the testing we do here at Harbour Unbox, then consider supporting us on Patreon. I'm your host, Steve. See you again next time.